Over the years, Batman has used his technological know-how to create countless vehicles to help him fight enemies. Joker. <laughs> He's had bat planes, bat boats, bat copters, and even a vehicle that could go from the air to under the sea. Three years after Batman Begins, its sequel, The Dark Knight, pushed Batman tech even further. One of the joys of working on a character who's been around for thousands of stories is you have to continually ask, how do I top this? The answer, the Bat Pod, a bold new vehicle that's part motorcycle and part lethal weapon. It's something which looks like some crazy Vikings idea of a customized uh, motorbike. It looks formidable and like everything with the movie, it works. It looks raw and it looks very extreme. It looks really powerful and dangerous. So I think that is sort of, it's sort of the bad boy, you know? task as usual was to build something that could really go fast, make turns, you know, the usual outrageous, you know, <laughs> parameters. It really had to belong to the same family as the Batmobile, so that's where we started. I'd hesitate to even call this a motorcycle just because it's so different from the way a motorcycle typically handles. I mean, there isn't really a seat. You're lying down on your belly and your legs are splayed apart three and a half feet. Riding the Bat Pod in a practically prone position gives the Dark Knight an aerodynamic edge. The low-profile technique is frequently used by professional racers. Grand Prix motorcycle racers, whenever they get a chance, whenever they're on a straightaway, they duck down and they make themselves as small as possible. And it's that aerodynamic drag they're trying to eliminate. When Batman is down on the Bat Pod in that position, he's eliminating drag and he's a lot less exposed. And he's also lowering the center of gravity, so he has more control over the vehicle. The Bat Pod weighs about 700 pounds. Because it's so large, controlling the bike takes extra skill, including the use of special handlebars, which act as arm shields. The steering of it was totally unconventional. You had these big cows hanging around his arms that he, had, he was more from his shoulder, actually, that he steered. Well, you want to use more of your body weight to turn a bike, and on this, you're going to... I think that if you're not just using your, your arms and your hands placed on the handlebar, but you've got this action so that you're in these arm shields that help you sort of lean the bike in, that's going to help you maneuver it. So that you're really forced to use your body weight to control it, as opposed to just arms, because you'd have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in order to be able to turn that kind of tire on a motorcycle. Besides the way it's steered, the Bat Pod is also unique in the way it's propelled. Well, the thing that strikes me the most about this is that where you would expect the motor to be, it doesn't exist. It's not in the middle of the bike. A standard motorcycle has a single engine in the center of the vehicle. On screen, the Bat Pod is intended to have not one, but two engines. And amazingly, one is tucked inside the hub of the bike's front wheel, and the other inside the back wheel. Putting the engines inside the wheels uh, is being worked on actually by a number of companies right now. In 2003, a Swiss engineering team developed a 160 horsepower engine mounted inside 22 inch car tires. Known as independent wheel drive, the technology can also be used in motorcycles, though it works best when the engine is in just one wheel of the bike. The disadvantage to having an engine in both the wheels is that they have to be synchronized some way. Otherwise, if one's spinning faster than the other, of course, one's trying to push you too fast or the other one's trying to pull you too fast, they would have to have computer control. This is something Batman, of course, can afford, and he would have his perfectly synchronized, and that way he's got great traction because he's got engine putting power down in back, engine putting power down in front, all synchronized, he's good to go. Today, thanks to scientists and engineers who've been inspired by the gadgets in the Dark Knight's world, Batman's technology is no longer just fantasy.
And I think much of the technology that comes out of Batman comes out of people who were fans, who are now scientists, or inventors. If you're a kid watching this stuff or reading about it, it makes you want to go out there and try to make things yourself. It's a seamless loop. The changes in the real world inspire the writers, and the writers and the artists in turn inspire the scientists and the engineers to dream. I've seen now what would have to become to stop men like him. From high-speed Batmobiles to fast-flying Batarang blades, and from armor-plated Batsuits to supercharged grappling guns, Batman has set the standard for superhero tech. What I love about Batman is the sense that these things really are possible. I think that makes it much more relatable because Batman's very much a human being. He embodies that fantasy of a man who, through sheer self-discipline, turned himself into a heroic figure. I think that's just a very compelling myth. I never said thank you. And you'll never have to. The accessibility of Batman is because you don't have to be rocketed from another planet or have strange powers. All you have to be is the top of your physical ability and top of what your mind can achieve. And in doing so, you can become Batman.